school dude Clem here, as some of you think I say. Anyway, I thought today I would show you my new amplified microphone, I mean, my new microphone preamp project that I'm working on, which is this thing right here. Now, this is my old microphone preamp that I've been using for about the past year now. And although it does sound pretty good, it's got a nice frequency response, very low distortion, it's got a very nice and smooth sound to it, it is a little bit hissy. And at first, when I used to play my videos back and I heard that background noise, I thought, well, you know, it's probably noise from the fan and the computer because I've got those on and uh, that's the background noise that I'm actually hearing, but I tried recording without the computer and the fan on and the background noise was still there, so uh, this thing is what was making the background noise. So now, I've made this new microphone preamp. And just look at this thing. It's a marvel of technology, isn't it? It's based on this circuit here, which I'm sure you've seen many, many times. And I apologize for all the flickering bands all over the picture. I will try to do something about that right now. It's the stupid auto exposure on the camera. Just because I put a piece of paper in front of the camera that's mostly white, it's made the camera freak out. It's like, oh my god, the picture's too bright, I've got to make it darker. So I've put the camera onto manual exposure and also manual focus because the focus kept drifting in and out as well. But anyway, that's technology for you. So this is the circuit that it's based on and I've built two of these because this is a stereo microphone preamp. So anyway, what this circuit is, is a microphone preamp that also has a quote-unquote automatic gain control on it. And the way that works is that when there's a loud signal coming in, it lets less of that signal in. And when the signal coming in is pretty quiet, it lets more of that signal in. And, uh, you know, that's in a nutshell, that's pretty much how the automatic gain on this thing works. So what we've got here is the incoming signal gets amplified by this transistor here. It's quite a bit of amplification there, because instead of using a BC546, I'm using a BC109, so I've got lots and lots of gain with very low noise, which is good, and then that gets sent out to the output connection. But also, if some of that gets sent into this transistor here, and then that gets fed into this little circuit here, which is a peak detector, and some of that gets fed into this transistor through this 2.2 kilo ohm resistor, and according to how much voltage we have here, it will affect this transistor here. So this transistor in combination with this resistor will limit the amount of signal that actually gets through. So when there's a lot of signal coming in, we'll have a higher voltage here. So this transistor will be turned on more and it will let less of the signal through. But when there's a quiet signal, the voltage here is going to be lower. So this transistor will be turned on less and it will let more of the signal through. And that's pretty much in a nutshell, how this circuit works. Except I've made a little bit of a change to it, which I will go through in just a minute. But this is the preamp itself, as you saw earlier. And as you can see, there's quite a lot on it for a circuit that only uses three transistors, right? Well, remember, this is a stereo preamp, so there's twice as many components as there normally would be. And also, what I've done is well, this area over here is the um, circuit you saw earlier. But what I've got here is a little booster circuit that the microphone actually goes into. And then that goes into this variable resistor here. And then into there. So now let's go over the circuit in a bit more detail. Okay, this is the second take on trying to record this because I just did a whole lot of recording only to find out that it was using the wrong microphone. It was using the camera's microphone instead of my nice dynamic microphone that I'm using. So, so anyway, this is the circuit with the proper transistors on it. As you can see, we've got two BC109s and a BC547. And if we go to the next picture, this is how I've modified it to make it work even better. So, what I've added here is another transistor, a BC109, again, 
because they have a nice high gain which is what you want when you're building a microphone preamp and as you can see it's the typical simple self-biasing circuit so the microphone is connected here and this 47k resistor you might be wondering you know what the hell is that for well that's for when I have a condenser microphone connected can you hear that dog out there doesn't even sound like a dog but like I was saying when I have an electric condenser microphone connected then that's going to provide the little bit of charge that it needs to work and everything will be all well and good and I've added this variable resistor here so I can adjust how sensitive it is and the really amazing thing about this is that these little transistors, these BC109s have so much gain that even with this only turned up about a third of the way yeah, that's all the sensitivity I need for it to work well with a dynamic microphone and of course if I was to plug an electric condenser microphone in there I'd have to turn that down even more because they're generally more sensitive microphones so it's worked better than I thought it would okay I've now plugged in a little stereo condenser microphone that I've made which is this thing here so you can hear exactly how well it works. Now it seems to sound a little bit muffled like this, you know, just simply because of the microphone placement. So let's get that up. Stick that on there. More stereo effect for you to hear. So you've got me in stereo now. So you've got twice the reason to want to kill yourself. So anyway. Now that's all out of the way, I'm going to go over what these switches are because I'm sure you're curious about that. Let me just get this wire out of the way so you can see it better. And also what all the connections are. Well, this one here is pretty obvious. That's where the microphone is. Con that's where the microphone plugs in. And I know it's on the skew, but there's nothing much I can do about that. It sort of moved while the epoxy was setting, and uh, well, you know, it's that stuff that you mix up and then it goes rock hard and well that isn't coming off anytime soon I can tell you that it's super strong and super stinky I have no idea that stuff is gonna smell so bad but anyway it smells like rotten eggs in here now but I guess that's something I'm gonna have to live with anyway this is the sensitivity control which adjusts how much gets from here into here We've also got a little voltage regulator on here. There's a 15 volt voltage regulator chip right there. And that feeds each circuit about 12 volts because if I can get the camera in there, you might be able to see that we've got a resistor here feeding this circuit. And there's another resistor right there that feeds this circuit. So they're well decoupled from each other so we don't get any nasty motor boning or generally weird things that can happen when you make an electronic circuit and this wire is the output wire which you cannot see because I don't put the camera down far enough this is the output which is going out to the computer's line in so you can hear from this thing and this wire is where the power comes in and this wire is the lead of my stereo microphone which is decided to get in the way Stay. So these switches um, play a bit of an important role, especially this one when I'm using different microphones because with this switch I can select between mono and stereo but not only that, if I have the switch like this, that's left channel only, if I have it like this, that's right channel only, and like this is back to stereo and this switch here on the far left is to turn the limiter on and off now I'm going to turn the limiter off and I suggest you turn your volume down right now okay ready three two one okay I'm now speaking with the limiter off and I've probably still blown your speakers apart so I better turn that back on so that's there if I don't want to use the limiter, and in some cases I might not want to, so uh, that's why I put that in there. And this switch is kind of hard to explain, but as you probably know, each channel is able to automatically adjust its gain individually. 
But if I put this switch on, then they're both locked together, so if there's a loud sound on one side, instead of turning that channel down, it'll turn both channels down instead. And a lot of times you might want that because because sometimes with each channel being able to adjust itself accordingly to the sound, that can make the sound stage in your head sort of bounce all over the place and it sounds kind of nasty through headphones and uh, unfortunately I'm gonna have to set it so both channels are not, so the gain of both channels is not locked together because one of these microphones is slightly more sensitive than the other one so uh, like this it makes both microphones come out of each channel the same. So I know what some of you might be asking well, you know, how did you switch the limiter in and out? How does that work? How are the switches wired up? Well, all will be revealed. Firstly, I will tell you how the limiter is switched in and out, and that is simply like that. Putting the switch there. When it's closed, the limiter is on, and when it's open, like you see in the circuit here, the limiter is off, because despite what this part of the circuit might be doing, this transistor won't get anything, so it won't inhibit the signal. So, for stereo... Come on... Make two of them, as you can see. So I've got the switches there to turn the limiter on and off. And this switch here simply ties this and this together. It's that simple, that's how easily it's done. And finally, there's the complete circuit wired up exactly how it is. Wired up in wired up in the exact same way that the real thing is. The only thing I haven't put in is the 15 volt regulator. And well, you can ponder over that circuit for a while and uh, I've got things to do, I've got a few things to do because my computer needs to be reinstalled again. I'm surprised it's even capable of recording this video in the condition it's in, but, um, well, it's Windows has gone wrong, not the computer itself, but... And then I've got some Tesla coiling to do later on, so, um, I'll leave you with this, and until next time, goodbye.